Love you, Danny. One sec. Hi. I hope you're all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm not bad, thanks. How are you getting on in quarantine? It, it's all right. A bit bored, but I'm doing Boris. all right. Yeah, very bored. Why? What, what, what are you spending your days doing? I, I like my days walking dog and doing a bit of training. <laughs> That's it. What kind of a dog do you have? I have a, a Shih Tzu and a Poodle mixed. Oh, okay. And what's its name? Bobby. Oh, cute name. Cute dog. It's a cute dog. I bet, I bet. So what kind of training are you getting up to? Uh, well, I haven't really got much equipment. I've left all my boxing gear at Dave's and Dave's at home. So literally just running and bodyweight exercises. That's all I can do at minute. So what would you be doing on a normal day? Normally, training with Dave, do two sessions a day. Uh, it'll be down at gym, either sparring, pad work, things like that. Train, train twice a day, yeah, five days a week. Quite hard sessions, but obviously it's uh, toned down a lot now because there's not really much I can do, boxing-wise mm -hmm. anyway. So I know that you have plans this year to go professional. Yep, very soon. It's my birthday in two weeks, so <laughs> I can start sending sending all the uh, information off and stuff like that, and then hopefully by the time this is over, I'll be professional. So obviously with everything that's going on, probably we pushed back a little bit. Plus. Yeah, yeah, it has. It's been pushed back, but not to worry about I've got plenty of time anyway, obviously. I'm only young, so... Well, you are very young. So let's talk about your boxing career. I know you're only 17, but um, how did you get into boxing? It's It were in the family. Uh, my great-granddad and my great-uncle were both professional. So oh, okay. It... It were always like a family thing. It was bound to happen by the time I was about six. And me and my cousins got sent straight to boxing gym over at Road Tom Hill. And I've been I've stuck to it ever since. So Can you remember that time? Can you remember wanting to go? Or were you like, I don't really want to go? What was it? Yeah, them times where I would, <laughs> I would prefer playing out with my mates. At, you know, eight, eight, ten year old. I was still a, a kid. But, you know... It's worked out now. I'm doing well now. So I'm looking forward to turning pro and everything else. So do you feel that because maybe it was in your family that it's kind of like a part of your blood? Maybe yeah, something definitely. that you were meant to do? Yeah, definitely. That's that's what I like to think to myself. Uh, mm. It's it's definitely, I was definitely a natural. When I, as soon as I went, I can. it was definitely in the blood, yeah. So what, what family members boxed? And how, uh, how far, like, were they amateur? Were they professional? Did they uh, have careers? My, my great, my great uncle, uh, he had, I think, around 70 professional fights. Wow. Yeah, Central Area Champion, but, like, back then, to be a Central Area Champion's, like, a British title these days. Yeah. But he, uh, yeah, he was very good. I had a lot of stories about him. And can then, you remember, can you remember, like, was there someone in your, can you remember people in your family when you were growing up, like boxing, can you, were you brought to fights? No, I, I never, I was never around it because nobody did it when I was a kid. But it were always, uh, you know, they were always talking about it. And as soon as I was, you know, I was very young in a boxing gym, so I, I've always been around it and always watched it and things like that. Was there ever a time where you were like, Do you know what? I don't want to box anymore. I know you're still young, but yeah. you're sort of at an age where, you know, this is the time where people kind of fall away from boxing and yeah, they at, get at into this other age, stuff. Now, I've never been more more into it. Obviously, I've got I've got a lot of I've got an opportunity a lot of kids my age would die for, so mm. I can't I can't be at like the point where I'm like I want to turn away, but when I was younger and I lost a couple of bouncing amateurs that were like, oh, am I good enough? Am I good enough? But I stuck, stuck through it and carried on. So so what, what is that feeling? Because, you know, people will watch this and 
they might never have fought so they, they might not be you it's, know they might not know what that feeling is like to train really hard and to have a yeah. fight and then to, to not win well it is it is upsetting but obviously it's it's only amateurs which when i was younger i didn't i didn't understand that it's like mm. it's it's 50 50 it can go either way it's you've got three well back then it was three two minute rounds like it's hard to judge a fight off three two minute rounds and when i used to travel far like liverpool and i can remember when i traveled to liverpool once it took us ages to get there and then i boxed far one or about 13 and they raised other kids hand and Oh, like, you know, it, it's hard, especially at that age. But I came through it and I've, I carried on. So, Do you feel like you have to have somewhat of a um, a thick skin to be a fighter? Yeah, definitely. It's very hard, very especially being that young. But now I understand. Like, I, I lost my last amateur fight, but it it's just, it is what it is. It's amateurs, it's learning. You either win or, lo uh, win or learn, but... Mm. Uh, yeah, it it was harder when I was younger to get to get over them losses, but winning matters when you become pro. So it was just learning then, and I'm glad I learned then rather than now. Do you feel that because you started fighting at such a young age and you've been training for so long, so there's a certain amount of discipline that goes into you know what you have to do to to even fight amateur? Do you feel yeah. like it's kind of matured you more than what your your age is? Well. I, I don't know about that one. I'm quite immature, but it's <laughs> it definitely uh, it definitely helps. It's it's good to you know I've, I can get my head down and I've been training since I was young, so yeah, I've got a lot of determination and it, and it gives you a lot of discipline and things like that. So before we talk about you turning pro and meeting Dave, and um, what are some of your favourite memories from the amateur days? Uh. I used to love when I was back in Tom Hill, I used to, you know, when I was younger, I used to love the the day of the home show and and like sometimes I would have a day off school, you know, <laughs> proper black mum would say, Oh, this is the biggest fight ever. I want a day off school and and just the old day and you tra you know you've been training really hard and all all my mates were it's from Tom Hill as well and then you would fight and hopefully win and then you would enjoy it and just be a kid I just loved it I wouldn't change it I absolutely loved it it was such a good time when you're training and you're fighting what is it that you're envisioning you know when, when those days when you really don't want to go to the gym and you know you have a really hard session like where is your mind at are you thinking about the next fight are you thinking about a career are you thinking about goals like wh where does this sit for you? you you just think about what what you're doing it for and how much you love it and you know it's gonna help in that next bar in that next fight and everything everything you do means something so mm -hmm. it's it's only you know you're if you don't do it you're only cheating yourself mm -hmm. it's gonna help in the long run so get on with it that's what that's what i think just get on with it it'll be it'll be worth it Absolutely. So then obviously, you know, it's well documented um, that you're working with Dave Allen. Yeah. Um, and he's been very, what appears to be influential over the last couple of years in your life. How did you meet yeah. him? So just at the local gym, he came down a lot and, he, you know, everybody were looking forward to meeting him. And mm. and, I, and before me and Dave, like now, we're like best mates, brothers, you know, uh, I were a fan, and I used to send him messages on <laughs> on Facebook saying, "Oh, good luck with your next fight and stuff like that." And we look at him now and laugh, but back then I was like, I really liked him as you know. But I, my great granddad and his dad were friends, so oh no way, yeah. So I always heard a, uh, uh, you know, Dave, his dad saying he yeah. were a great boxer, and I always remembered name, always listened to stories, and then. He just took me on and started taking me up pads, showing me a bit of stuff, and then, you know, he started just training me really, and and that just gave me that somebody like him telling me that I can do, you know, be a British champion and and do this just gave me that, you know, that extra push that it just really helped, really gave me that confidence boost that I needed. I what do you think um, it was that he saw in you? that made him want to come on board and work with you? Well, I, I always thought that, but 
when he used to come down, he used to body spar with all the kids and uh, and you know have a laugh with them all. And I would, I just always ended up staying in. And I ended up doing like rounds and rounds, <laughs> and he would have knocked me down a hundred times, but I always got back up and carried on, and and I just loved it. And he said, he said he could see that I had a bit of natural talent, and uh, and he just took it from there, and I've improved, you know, drastically since then. Like I did at one point because I boxed so long, I thought there's not surely there's no else I can learn. But since I met Dave, it's like it was just a breath of fresh air. Like, it, unbelievable. I loved it, and I still do. Do Do you feel in yourself that you are quite natural in picking up things, picking up things with like technique or just like learning a new skill set? Was that something that you sort of recognised in yourself early on, or was it Dave that made you realise that? It It was Dave that Dave showed me stuff that you know I would have never thought of, but when Dave shows it me, I can I, can, I just do it. So. It, that makes it a lot easier working mm. together. So, so you've you've had some like really incredible experiences being alongside him. You know, like you said, uh, stuff that many people your age was yeah. just killed to be in in those opportunities, yeah. like getting to attend those big fight nights and you know being at the O2 and just to experience what it's like at that that high level. Yeah, um, talk us through that that the time period in the last couple of years you know getting to experience that it's you know it's unbelievable it's like sometimes when i first went it was like i had to pinch myself i've been you know meeting people that i watch on tv all the time and and then seeing them frequently like it was just like sometimes it, you know i can't thank dave enough for what he's done but it's also you know I've, it's opened my eyes up to the world so when I do get into it, it, I'm almost used to it already. So it's just uh, like another um, step ahead of uh, what's coming. What's been the biggest thing that you've noticed? Like what stood out to you the most about being present in, in that sort of end of the game? It's that it's uh, very business-like that mm. I didn't expect. Yeah, It's very, uh, very planned out and everything's done for a reason and I there's just a lot a lot to it that I never even that crossed my mind it's it's just a big business in it and a lot to think about all the time so how, how did it make you feel because obviously like there's so many young athletes young fighters that are like I'm going to turn pro this is what I want to do they see the big fights on tv they see the guys that are doing it you know they want to have careers like them and then sometimes when they get into the business and they do see the business end of it, they're kind of like, this isn't um, what I had expected. Yeah. And obviously for you at such a young age to be able to see see it very clearly before you actually go pro, I imagine it's like um, very valuable for you. Yeah, well, it's just made me appreciate being in good hands, I think, yeah. because it, I think it, if I wasn't with, with Dave and met the people I have done, I would probably be a bit... I would have been worried and, and a mm. bit scared of what I was getting myself into, but having Dave, who's already had that experience, it's a big, big help in hand, really. Does it make you nervous that he's putting so much faith into you um, and that he's so such uh, high expectations for you? It, yeah, but it, then again, it's like, it, it helps as well. It's mm. like, there's a lot of pressure and there were a lot of pressure in just little amateur fights that, didn't re they didn't mean something but it it plays in your mind it it felt like it meant a lot more than it than it did but it it can only help me for the future really because there's a lot of pressure in boxing like I do look at myself as in future I will be having a big fight mm. and I will have a lot of pressure on me so if I get used to it now it you know it's just gonna it's just an experience really for mm -hmm. the future and what about in terms of like I suppose the media side of things and you know like even stuff like this social media like yeah. people knowing who you are yeah you know, how do you deal with that it's some it's nice sometimes like I can remember <laughs> when when I only had you know Dave helped me out I was getting a couple of followers and I can remember <laughs> going to Manchester like uh, that big shopping centre with my mate did, and somebody just shouted my name 
from across the thing. I had no idea who it was. <laughs> like, I just started blushing. I'm like, what, what's going on? I don't even know who it is. I got right nervous, but yeah. What, what so, do, is it, is it more young people that stop you or older people or who recognizes you? I think you? Boxing, boxing fans vary, don't they? That yeah. It's such an old spot and so many people love it. So it varies, I think. And what do they say to you? Like, what's what's the kind of conversation that they're it's having? Normally, the side is. I normally get, oh, that's Danny Morrell, Dave Allen's lad. Like Dave <laughs> Allen that's what I get at the minute. But, <laughs> but it's it's all good. It's it's helping me in with my career. So I appreciate it. Who are the people that you looked up to when you were growing up? I, it were. My granddad and my uncle, but the boxers and the fighters that I watched, I used to love Muhammad Ali, mm. as you can see. Yes. On the wall. Uh, <laughs> I used to I used to love watching Joe Calzaghe and Chris Eubank and Nigel Benn and uh, just everything, really. I used to love Mike Tyson. You know, most boxers that most people love, but yeah, I just used to love watching boxing. What would you like people to say about you? Uh... I don't know, actually. That's that world champion, Danny Morrell. That's the yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you have, do you have timelines? I mean, because you're you're so young. Well, I don't. You're probably are you the young? Will you be the youngest professional? Turn professional in the UK. I don't. I think there's other other fighters that have turned over as soon as they've turned eighteen. But I think I'm pretty sure in uh, Ireland you can turn. Pro at sixteen, I think. Yeah, we our youngest pro fighter is a guy called James Power, and he's from Cork. Um, yeah. And he he turned pro at sixteen, and he ended up. Um, I'm not sure if he um, he hasn't fought here, um, because the boxing scene over here with licensing and stuff is a bit yeah in the air. But he's fought in Mexico. Um, yeah, yeah, which is really really cool. And he's he's someone as well that's um you know got a very uh, mature head and his shoulders knows exactly yeah. what he wants and yeah w was there a lot of people that um you know d d have people said to you you're too young it, think about you this. always get that you, you, a lot of people say oh you should have a you know an extra year or two in amateurs but at the minute with the obviously the a lot of boxing nowadays is getting bums on seats and at the mm. minute we date you know dave's obviously helped a lot and with people, I can turn now and in a minute it's like the best opportunity I'll get. You know, it might not be there in two mm -hmm. years' time. So, yeah, I need to take it with, with both hands. So, Could you imagine having to do something else? Not at this point. I, mm. I've sacked off college. You know, I've, got, <laughs> I've gone, just gone for it 100%. So, at this point, no. It'll, if not, boxing, I'll be plastering with my dad. So, oh, <laughs> you know, boxing's going to work. It will, it will. Have, have yeah. faith. I'm going to, um, we, I, I, I let people ask questions. So I'm going to go into the uh, question box. I see there's like loads after coming in there. So we'll ask yeah. them. Um, right. Give me a moment and I'll have a look. It, it, it's a dodgy time having to uh, go into this comp box. And, yeah, there'll uh, be some. There'll yeah, be some they, they're there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me go through these. Um, uh, okay. Okay, someone has asked, what's been the best advice that Dave has given you? Uh, it, there's so much like with boxing. Boxing-wise, I could go on for days. Uh, but it's like we've, we've got, got more of a, like, a relationship as well as boxing, mm -hmm. like. Dave always says to me, like, people said, you know, you said earlier about the pressure. Yeah. But Dave said, uh, I don't, if he turned to me tomorrow and said, you know, I don't care about boxing. Mm. It, like, if if you don't want to do it anymore, that's fine. I'll help you with whatever you want to do. So it's not much advice, but things like that. Dave's very, uh, he's always giving me good advice. I can't, I can't pinpoint one. Well, he's very much... Um... You know, be, being a good person, I think, is very apparent to him. Not just being yeah. a good boxer. I think it's um, yeah. 
there's a little bit more there than than just being a a, a good boxer or a great boxer yeah. with him. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people love him as well because you can you can feel like you can connect with him. I know it's only mm. through a phone screen, but yeah, he's always he's very open about himself and and it, it that will help a lot of people. So yes, I agree. Right, I'll go back in again. Let's see what else. <laughs> Fucking hell. Well, this one, I do all the time with There's this so many questions. that I cannot read them out. Like, come mm -hmm. on. Um, okay, uh, Kenzie's asking, when it, what date is your birthday? 4th of May. The, You're a Taurus. Yeah, a lot of people say Star Wars Day. <laughs> That's how most people remember it. Maybe oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're a Taurus, you're a bull. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we're going again. Um, some, lots of people are saying put the comments on, but I'm not that stupid. Um, Caleb has asked, what has been your most favourite time that you've had with Dave? The, the best time were probably Nick Webb because it was the first time I ever experienced, you know, going to... O2 Arena, meeting people from like, you know, matchroom boxing and things like that. Yeah. And then the 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 fight as well were very were very special. So Who's yeah. been the most um who's the person that you've been most starstruck with? Probably Nigel Ben. Oh I think. I'm so it, because it was just like we were just sat there. I think it was for Bracamonte fight. We were just sat in change rooms. And he just walked in, and I was like, I just didn't know what to say. I just had a picture. Yeah, I wouldn't it. know what to say either. I was shit myself. R I'm Ricky Hatton. That's who yeah. I, well, I'm like. That were amazing as well, actually, because I've got so many of his DVDs, and then sparring his yes. son. And what, him watching me, that was probably the most nervous I've been in my life. Yeah, I you know, I, uh, I, um, he was at a show over here last year, or like a year and a half ago and he was in uh, Chris Blaney's corner and when I'm working I'm like filming the walkouts and stuff and I was filming Chris coming out and then mm -hmm. I looked up and I realised that Ricky Hatton was to vex me and I like, literally nearly shot myself I was like yeah. so like turned into such a fanboy yeah um, it's a good one right okay we go in again okay I did <laughs> I heard a rumour right a source oh god <laughs> Can we talk about this, the training that you do? Is it crags? Oh, God. I heard that you are like some kind of, if you weren't a boxer, you could be a champion hill runner. Is this oh, no, true? No way. That's not me. I'm, it's probably <laughs> Dave taking the mic. I'm, yeah, Dave, I'm, you bollocks. I knew it. I said it to him earlier on. I was like, this I'm is terrible at running. I can't run. Well, I can run, just not fast. <laughs> but like Dave, Dave put posts on Twitter of him running, and then it looks like I'm running backwards. I look that slow, but I'm just slow when it comes to running. I don't know. <laughs> I can run for miles, but not very fast. Listen, you can be good at other things. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um. Uh. <laughs> I can imagine what they're like. I don't even need to look. Are these your friends? Oh my Probably. god. Probably. Not Jeez. not my friends. Um uh, <laughs> Tell a joke or something that you <laughs> me. Uh, uh where do we see? Okay, Callum has asked a good question. What do you eat before fights? That's a good one. Normally I've got quite a bad stomach. I need to eat a long time before. Yeah. So or I get bad stitch, obviously, but I normally have Jaffa cakes. I've always, I always have. I heard when I was young that they're good for energy, so I just always had Jaffa cakes. Hmm, interesting. Or if there's no how, Jaffa how cakes, many, in my how many bar. are we talking here? Like one, two or, two or three. Okay, that's an that's an alright. They're quite right. light, aren't they? You they can are indeed. Eat them in one bite. Are they a cake or are they a biscuit? I would say biscuit. It's a biscuit. Isn't it? It's shaped like a biscuit. Oh, I think it's a cake. Is it? Would you say I'll, it's a biscuit? I wouldn't say. I would say cake. When I think of a cake, I think of a big one that you have to cut up. That's true. That's true. Okay, right. We'll take one or two more. And um, someone, uh, Nia, Elisa, 
has asked, what's some of your favorite moments from school? God, so many. I love school. I was just Do you actually love school? I did, I did actually really enjoy school because it was just so fun. So are you finished now? Have you finished yeah, school? Yeah, I've finished, yeah. Well, oh, okay. I finished when I was 16, but when I went to college for a bit, but then dropped out because, uh, you know, so I could train full time because I knew. W what were you doing in college? I did sport. Oh, very good. So I got a bit, of, helped me a bit actually with my boxing and stuff like that. Yeah, I imagine. Right, okay, they're kind of flying in there. So, oh my God, Dave! Jesus. I bet um, it was a stupid one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, trying to be professional here, Dave. Bloody yeah, hell. We're, trying, we're, we're really trying our best here. Um, would you spar Lomachenko? Yeah. I'll probably get beat up, but it's like, <laughs> I would want to see, you know, see it with my own eyes. And if that means I have to spar him and get beat up, then I will. Sounds good. Um, Tristan has asked, if you could pick your debut fight, who would you pick and why? Someone really crap. <laughs> so they make me look really good. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Domenico has asked, would you not consider having one more amateur fight before you go pro? No. Too late. I'm going in. I've had enough amateur fights. I've had a lot, so pro it is. Um, Kenzie has asked, what weight are you going to fight at pro? Probably 10 stone, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, with the day before weighing, I think, I, well, so, I know I'll make 10 stone. Will you have to uh, cut weight or I will cut, is it close enough minute, to where you are? At a minute, I'm about, when I'm full-time training back, obviously when everything gets back to normal, I'm normally 10 stone 10. So 10 stone 8, so it's like 8 pounds. You can do that easy with a full camp. Um, when do we see? Uh, most memorable amateur bouts from your career so far? Probably, probably my first first ever one. I, I don't think I'll ever forget it. My first ever proper bout or our eleven. I don't, I don't think I'll ever forget it. And I won, so it was amazing. Um, there is one good one there. What is this? Uh, let me try and find it here. Oh, do you have a walkout tune for your pro debut? Confirmed, yeah. yes. Well, what it, is it? It started uh, when I had my first amateur fight with Dave. It's called Daddy Cool. Oh, Boney M. What yeah. a tune. But it sounds like Danny. So it we does. just said. Uh, so Danny now cool. I've, got, I've got on my shorts Danny Cool. So yeah, I think that's going to be my. <laughs> that's my a really good name. one. Yeah, yeah, that's a really, really good one. Okay, I'm going to take one more. Um, oh, this is a good one. Kaz has asked, if you could be on an undercard other than Dave's, whose undercard would you be on? Any big one. I, don't, I would like to be on, if I could, it were like a dream one. Probably one in America, I would think. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And just so I could watch them. Probably someone like Canelo. Uh, that would be amazing, I think. If we could get an undercard of that and then watch his fight, I think that would be amazing. There is... Um, uh, Kira has asked, what are you watching? What? Watching what? Are you what? Watching? I, I suppose, like, what are you watching on TV or, like, on your laptop? Wait a minute, I'm just... I'm, I've started watching that Tiger King. I think everyone's going on about that on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of it so far? It's, it's crazy, isn't it? It's actually meant... I don't get why you would have a 